morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with KPP Live, the show that's dedicated to providing you with advice for life so that you can live richly and work towards the life that you've earned. My name's Kyle Roy. I'm a financial advisor with Kentucky Planning Partners, and I'm so proud to be joined with Annette Manius, the founder, president, and CEO of Oasis Solutions, which is a business software consulting firm based here in Louisville, Kentucky. And Annette and her team serve clients all over the country and have been doing so for 30 years. So today's show, we're gonna to talk to Annette about her business model, her leadership, the development of a software firm in the 90s before the internet was even a thing, <laughs> when clouds were just puffy things up in the sky, not web-based solutions. And I, Annette, I can't tell you, in our conversations, I've just been really excited about this conversation and sharing you with our viewers. So thank you for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to uh, talk with you about this. Me too. Me too. And, and we have talked about a range of, of subjects, everything from Oasis to your leadership to how you built your business. And um, I, I want to start, if you don't mind, just tell the audience about yourself, where you're from, and a little bit about Oasis. Okay, great. Um, yes, so I am uh, born and raised in Louisville, so lived here all my life, and uh, started Oasis uh, 30 years ago. We just had our 30th anniversary in May. Um, so we, what we do is we help clients that are ready to take the next step in their business uh, software. So most people have heard of QuickBooks, and we say we're the next step to QuickBooks. So when someone feels like they need more reporting or more information out of their system, they would come to us and we help uh, determine what's the best software and then we implement and train and support on that software. Wow, and you have clients that have had relationships with Oasis for 27 years. 27 years, So, yes. So it's not just a consultant that comes, builds a machine and leaves. You build long-term relationships with your with your partners and your mm -hmm. clientele. Mm -hmm. I think that's been really the key to our business is that we are relationship business. We're not a one and done. We're not, you know, we're going to help you with your software and then we're and then we're done. We get really involved in that relationship, and our best clients are ones that see us as a partner, not just a vendor. So mm -hmm. uh, again, we've, we've had some customers for 27 years, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> what a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, today when we talk about software consulting, it, it's, it's normal in today's environment with the technology that we have. But let's go back to the beginning, if you don't mind, because mm -hmm. your story is just so inspiring so let's go back to the beginning in 1991. How did Oasis begin and what was the environment like? Well, so we began, I worked here locally for a CPA firm and um, they, I was the youngest at the firm at the time. We had a progressive partner that said, you know, there's this software, of course, think about <laughs> back then software was nothing, you know, it was two floppy disks. <laughs> and, um, you know, they asked me to uh, learn the software and to use it internally at the firm. And then eventually we started going out and helping clients with it. And I thought, wow, you know, I really like this. I love accounting. I, I like being out with people. So my brother uh, had come home from out of town uh, for Easter one year, and it was 1990 actually. And um, we started talking, he's in sales and marketing, and we started talking about this. And he said, you know, I'd like to move home. He said, why don't I come home and we'll just start this business. And we're like, well, okay. <laughs> so May 1st, 1991 was our official uh, first day on the job. And we rented a little office <laughs> that the two of us were in uh, at Middletown. And, uh, and we started the business. So he was sales and marketing. But, you know, you think about it, So, Kyle, you and I were talking about what what did that really look like yeah. in 1991? You What's know, a floppy no, disk? Yeah, what, what, what is right. a floppy disk? Know, Most right? people probably don't even know what that is. I, I know, right? I mean, it was just, <laughs> and a lot of people back then didn't know either because they were still doing all their accounting and their inventory on these, you know, spreadsheets and abacus. <laughs> 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 all these different things. So it was like a... It was very innovative. You know, when I think about when I think about 1991, that was very innovative. Sure. So it was very interesting. So that's what was exciting, I think, to us 
was that it was it was very uh, cutting edge back then. There was no internet. I mean, you think about it. There was no internet. There was no email. There was none of that was there. No. So sales were different. I was thinking about it the other day about how sales are so different today. Yeah. I mean, back then people relied on us to tell them what it would do. Today, people when they come to us, they've already done all the research on the internet. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's it's they the buyers are far more educated today on the software piece. The piece they aren't as educated on is what we do, which is the consulting piece to help them implement that software. Well, and not only that, it must be a challenge because back then you needed a professional to understand and explain the software. Right. Whereas today you literally can talk about software in a conversation like this, yeah. pick up your smartphone and there will be an advertisement for it and you can just click right. a button. That's right? right. And That's right. and it's almost like the first to the table will get the sale. And I want to talk about that because that's really important that we'll talk about the evolution of the business because I, th- I know you're going to be able to provide tremendous insight. But before we do that, if you don't mind, I want to go back to your your vision for what Oasis was back then and what it turned into. Because because Annette, so that everybody knows, is is an extraordinary entrepreneur. And I was talking before we went on on air that what I find when I meet with extraordinary people is that the habits that they do every day, the things that are just part of your life are really great learning tools and behavior tools that future leaders should know. And and one of the one of the the things that you said to me last week that I literally have been thinking about all weekend was when I said, "All right, when you were in 1993, 94, you must have had this vision for what Oasis was going to be because today, 30 years later, you've got 25 employees, you're growing more, you service people all over the country. You must have seen that coming." And your answer was no. 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 So let's let's talk about let's talk about just just that, those initial days when you were going to build this business. Let's talk about why you think you're so successful, how you overcame challenges, and what you said to me was, I didn't really think about it. I just did it. So mm-hmm. if we could just talk about that a little bit. H- how did you just do it? What what do you think is at the core of that mentality and the and how has that been able to help you succeed? Well, I you know, after we talked about it, I thought about it and I thought, well there's two things and, and I had said this before and I'm not kidding, I would be a terrible employee. <laughs> so I you know, I've gotta have my own business because I would be a terrible employee. <laughs> and, you know, if failure is is not an option. I mean that's just kind of I think innate in my personality that um, you know, I'm just gonna trudge through and we're just gonna, you know, like you said, there's been a lot of obstacles and a lot of changes in 30 years, mm-hmm. but you just have to look at it and say, okay, that's, you know, failure was not an option for me. Well, and so let's talk about that because I'm sure there have been mistakes made and, and setbacks and some people would look at those as failures and maybe close up shop, but how have you worked through that? And I mean, failure not being an option, I think is an extraordinary common denominator that entrepreneurs have. You learn mm-hmm. from mistakes mm-hmm. and you, you, grow fr- you grow from them. So do you have any examples of that? Maybe the 2000 crash, how did that look? Or maybe 2008, you've seen some tremendously difficult markets. Mm-hmm. We have. Um, you know, it's interesting because uh, t- the 2000 was really a good time for for us. Really? Because, you know, it was the, um, I forget what it was called, but when everybody thought their computers were going to crash. Y2K. Y2K. Uh, Y2K. Right. Y2K. Yeah. And so that was a great time for us, <laughs> really. It, it really uh, was a good time. But, but then when we hit that market crash mm. in 2008, 2009, I mean, we had never, I had never personally, we as a business had never seen anything like that and wasn't really sure how to navigate it. So uh, we have formed over the years relationships with other businesses like us, you know, in our industry across the country. So I'm reaching out to people, you know, that's always been my, my thing is, you know, let's see what other people, what they're doing and what advice they have and let's pull in some experts here on what's going on. And uh, so that, I think that's what helped us to, to, to get through that time is, um, you know, and I, 
so back and when I think about 2008 my team that I had then I probably had 10 employees maybe 11 mm -hmm. but they had all been with me like my first employee is still with us wow. I'm so proud of that she's been there 28 years Wow and um, but they they were have been long term and they're entrepreneurial like me mm -hmm. so we all put our heads together and said okay let's just hunker down let's figure out what we're gonna do and we made it through mm. so um, it just again you just kind of plow through it you go yeah the, you know closing shop was not an option no and and let's so let's I, I really think there's an underlying theme here I, I think it was Simon Sinek we've talked about Simon Sinek on this show before He's a business leader. Um, Google Simon Sinek. He's got phenomenal content out there if you don't know him. But one of the things that he talks about is the purpose of a company. And if Oasis in 1991 was simply to provide clients with a floppy disk type software path platform, you would have closed shop in, in 1993, right? In 1995, <laughs> it wouldn't have been. But, but the purpose of your company is to consult the relationships you have with their software needs, right? Correct. So it's it's not just about it's not about selling a product. Mm -hmm. It's it's about building relationships and finding what what you need. You know, and Cynic always used the the example of, you know, if um, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll ad lib here, but it's like if the horse manure cleaner from the streets of Chicago in 1905 only was to clean horse manure off the streets. When the car came along, he wouldn't have done it. But if that person's job was to keep the city streets clean, then that business would still thrive mm -hmm. today, right? Mm -hmm. So as you have seen evolution in the software industry, I don't know if that analogy sticks, by the way. I don't know. So we might edit that one out, but we it's live, so this is what we get. But the bottom line is you have seen such evolution and I'm just so impressed by you in that, in that you have been able to take an, a, a, a business model and literally have been able to, to evolve with the most rapidly changing technology I think we have seen since the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, let's go back to that point for a moment. Talk about how you have evolved and how you've been able to, to focus on the core competencies of Oasis and thrive in that environment? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that when I think about that, software is just one piece of it, of the component. You know, you need software obviously to run your business today, but really the bigger component of it are people mm. and processes and the relationship and how we're going to help. So I think what makes Oasis different, and, we, and this has been from day one, so for 30 years, no matter what software we have, right, this is really our core, is that we help people make their businesses better. Hmm. So, um, and, and what's interesting about it is that most of the people that are uh, project managers with us and help customers are former, you know, CFOs, former controllers, you know, they're CPAs, they're MBAs. So they've been behind that desk right they're not just software people they've been behind that desk and we understand business so it's not that we can just go in and just task oriented and implement software for you we can help you make your business better with that software and that's been true from day one that really is our core and I think that's how we stayed in business for 30 years it's absolutely is because you understand it's a people business it's a people business it's not a technology business correct and and I don't think that's I, I don't think that's something that most business boat business leaders understand. It's if you are every day waking up with the attitude of serving others. I think I don't know, and I could be wrong. That's why you know you never were going to fail, perhaps, because you knew people were always going to need help, mm -hmm. and you had the t the ability, the skills, and the surrounded by the people that could do it. So let's talk about your team, if you don't mind. Um, I know you're extremely proud. Uh, uh, longest standing employee, 28 years. Mm -hmm. Longest standing client, 27 years. That's fabulous. So let's talk about the growth of your team. You had 10 people in 2008. Mm -hmm. Now you have... 25. And let's talk about your team. 
Um, so our, so it's interesting because the software we started out with 30 years ago uh, implementing for people, we still have. Wow. That software is still there. Not it's on evolved. floppy disks anymore. Not on floppy no. disks anymore. <laughs> and that software has evolved. And then we uh, decided that we needed to add to that portfolio in order to grow. So we added another product probably eight or nine years ago. And with that came an addition of a lot of team members with that. So. So it's been great, um, but I, I've added uh, a couple of people that have really taken our culture to heart. <laughs> and er everything that we do is like, gosh, does that align with our vision? Mm -hmm. Does that align? So we're very much in, you know, does that align with, with what we're doing and uh, what our vision is for the company and our culture? So what's the vision now? Um, well, so, a couple, a couple different ways to answer that. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have our vision statement that is, you know, we're transparent and customer centric, and uh, you know, we have about a, a five different vision uh, things that we have our, on our vision statement. And then, you know, thinking about going forward, we will always be that company that is helping our customers and helping companies. Uh, make their make their companies better by the use of software basically mm -hmm. is what we do so our vision is actually we're hiring two more people this week so uh, in the next five years we will um, double our size so that's our vision and um, in the next uh, two to three years I will be passing the baton mm -hmm. so to my team so that's that's where I, that's what excites me now is being able to grow them mm. to the point of being able to uh, take over that business and make it another 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have said, well, you know, people approach you about selling the business. And, you know, when I looked at it, I said, you know what, it's more important to me that it's a legacy and that it, it sustains for for my employees and my customers you know that's true leadership i i was listening to uh, another podcast jocko willink is a podcast and he he said that true leadership is creating a culture where you become dispensable so in the military that's what leaders do you you train others so that if god forbid something happens to you they're the leadership that will come mm -hmm. in and i think that's an enormous it takes a tremendous amount of humility uh, vision for the future and that's that's got to be extremely exciting for both you like you said your employees and your your customers too I mean it's just um, I just love it and I, one of the things that that I did want to to talk about is is as software becomes easier to access right I've got to believe that there are clients that you have that decided to click that pop up on their computer buy that software because it might have been easily accessible they might have thought it would have been great but there's there's another another line I'm sorry I'm full of full of these lines say but there's a line that says we might be although we're drowning in information always have information coming out of the, at us we're starving for great ideas mm -hmm. so I can see Oasis as the ease of getting all these software packages and the duplicity of all these products out there I can see Oasis becoming even more relevant for business owners because they're, I can't imagine all software platforms are created equal. So let's talk about that going forward. Uh, uh, let's talk about maybe what kind of process it is that you have with your clientele so that they don't make the mistake that others mm -hmm. do in a year or two, have a costly decision, a low cost platform that they bought on a whim. How much could that cost them over a couple years by the time they come to you and say, I need your help? Right, right. Um, so what we do, hopefully, we are able to talk with people before they click that button, <laughs> right? <laughs> that they come to us. And normally, uh, most of our business comes from referral. So it'll be somebody saying, you know, you might have a client that says, hey, you know, I'm thinking about buying new software, you know, and you would refer us. Well, that's perfect because we've gotten them at the, at the point where they haven't really made a decision yet. Mm -hmm. And we can help guide them. So what we do is... We go in, we have a process that we go in and into a company and we take about three days, two to three days, and we analyze all their processes. What are they doing now? 
and then talk with the owner or the, the CFO, whoever it is, about what's their vision of what the, where they're going. Mm -hmm. And we look at those processes and say, this isn't gonna get you there. You know, and a lot of times we'll recommend new processes along with the new software. But, you know, there's been times when we've looked at it and said, you know, what we have is not going to, it's like fitting a, a square, you know, a round peg into a square hole. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not good for us. Sure. You know, but, and it's not good for the customer. So we've had those discussions with people too, but typically, you know, we're going to, because we know what our niche is, we're going to take them down that path and we can help people determine by showing them what the software will do, how we can help them. And then once they decide they want to work with us, then we go through and we, we have a very methodical way of implementing that software and then change management. That's a huge thing. What's that? Well, it's, it's uh, you know, think about, so we're working with a customer now that they've been on the same software for 20 years. Oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. A lot of their DOS team base. member. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it, it is. is. It is DOS based. <laughs> it is. Wow. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and so a lot of their people have been there that long too. So trying to, to think about the switch wow. from a DOS base to what to what we're taking them to in the cloud and that change management is with those employees. Wow. You know, and everybody's at a different spot. You know, so it, it's interesting. Wow. That's really, and again, go back to it. I mean, it's people. Yep. It's it's working with people and helping them to succeed in the new environment. It's very stressful. Well, and not only, but you did say something key in there too. Uh, I think a beautiful nugget is you said, if we're not a fit, we'll tell you. And it's not good for Oasis if you're trying to shove a round peg into a square hole because then you become a product salesperson, right? You become a deliverer of product regardless of the need. It's about the product, not about the person. And I think really, Annette, you get it. You understand that it is about the human being at the other side of the table. You said it, you, you put whatever that company's vision is, that's what you make your vision. And if what you can do isn't aligned with that, then you walk away. And that takes, some people say it takes courage. I, I think it takes just being a, smart savvy entrepreneur and understanding where you fit so and you embody all those things and and oasis does too and i think it just sounds like the growth of your company is just parabolic up and to the right and i think those goal, goals of doubling i mean it just sounds like you're going to be there sooner than you think yeah that's yeah. great yeah it is so how do people find oasis um well, we have a social media presence, um, so we we're, we're, uh, do a lot on LinkedIn and, and a little bit on Facebook, mostly on LinkedIn, and we have a lot of events up until COVID. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, and we're, but we're starting to do that again. Uh, so we have a lot of different events that, are, that uh, bring in um, our, our local partners. So we have different companies here locally that that we partner with that are in the same space that we are. They may be an HR company that is in the same type of customer. Well, we will have an event that brings their customers and our customers together. Brilliant. And it's it's worked really well. Mm. You know, so we get to meet people we don't know, they get to meet people they don't know. So that's gone really well. So when we can get back to events, that's great. But really, if I look back over 30 years and I look at all of our customers, they have come from word of mouth. Mm. You know, so organic growth, organic doing growth. the right thing, not thinking about the future, focused on the people every right, day. Right, right. And a lot of times, which is, this is something I'm a little proud of too, is that- You should be well, big, big, really big, <laughs> hugely proud, and hugely proud. You know, when you look at it, so we have a, a map and a little pins on it of where our customers are, and we have one that's in Las Vegas. And somebody said to me, how in the world did you get a customer in Las Vegas? <laughs> and it's because the CFO uh, worked here at a company and loved us and he got a job offer in Las Vegas and took us with him. Wow. You know, and we have a lot of those stories of that's how we became, you know, having customers all over the country. And that doesn't happen by selling a product. Right. It, it, it happens by building real relationships exactly. and actually caring about your people. Exactly. 
Yeah, and and uh, I just um, gosh, I could continue to go on forever. I really could. And I so what I would uh, I could tell you go on to oasisky.com as well. So your Correct. website oasis o a s i s k y dot com. Um, I saw the testimonial videos that you have. Uh, one, the home of the innocents in Louisville, Kentucky. The president gave a phenomenal testimonial of what you've done for them. And also, that's just another extraordinary uh, organization, the Home of the Innocents. They do just unbelievable things for, for their the children of the community. Um, that might be somebody we'd like to get on at some time, too. Right? That would be I great. Mean, that place just is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And, it is. Uh, and so go on to OasisKY.com. Go on to the website. Like Annette and Oasis on Facebook. And uh, if you are, have any questions, concerns, if you are finding yourself in a situation where you've hit a roadblock, maybe you've hit a glass ceiling with the growth of your company and you don't know why, well, it might be because you're spending hours uploading receipts onto QuickBooks. It might be an inefficiency that Annette in her 30 years of industry experience and her team could find in a couple day consultation. And you'll have the confidence of knowing with Annette and her team that she'll be putting your needs, your goals, your dreams ahead of their own. And, and I really think that that's the differentiator. That's why Annette and her team have built such an extraordinary company, among other things. Uh, and I mean, I hope in this, in this conversation we've hashed out just a few of them, but I just have a feeling, Annette, that we've been able to kind of scrape the tip of the iceberg in terms of your level of talent, your love, the service that you've provided, and I just can't thank you enough for coming on board. No, well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Gosh, my pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to, to leave the, the viewer about Oasis or yourself? No, I think I'm good. I summed it up yeah, pretty you good. You summed it up pretty good. <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm so grateful, and uh, thank you for coming on. And if you ever have any questions for Annette, please, please, please look them up at Oasis ky.com and if you have any questions about your, fi your finances if you're looking for a firm that puts your needs ahead of our own a fiduciary we do the same thing at Kentucky Planning Partners so on behalf of everybody here thank you Annette for coming on board thank you everybody for watching we look forward to seeing you next week bye bye